service uh, this, this last week for uh, Brian Spurgeon's uh, sister, Devon. Yes. And one of the things that I remember of her, she's always smiling. Whenever I see her come to church, uh, the body always has, you know, she has that, like Brian, has that smile. Um, and whenever she goes, whether this church or another church, she always feels very comfortable. She, she wasn't feeling like she's a guest. She, she feels belong. I mean, that's, that's her spirit. I think that's a good spirit to, to understand because she pictures that spirit of belonging. And that's, that's a spirit I think we, sh we should have for each other because we are one body. Um, and it is characterized by the love of God. That's what it's all about. It's not about just the theology of it, of it but it's, it's love. Um, next uh, year, I've been talking to people in LA and here about our theme for next year. And I was proposing the theme to be uh, proclaiming the love of God. Uh, that's the theme for next year, 2024 15. And uh, so, you know, there will be so much talk. It's a big subject, so we can talk about many things, but it's, it, that's what it's all about. You know, it's about the love of God, no discrimination, or, you know, uh, just wonderful, unconditional love. And so we will go into that uh, love of God. But then there is the word of proclaiming. And of course, to proclaim doesn't mean only to utter or to say it by by words, to proclaim is to share, to be an example. I mean, you can come up with all of that to be a light. And um, I think that's what the world needs. We have like 7 billion people, 7 billion people today. And there is like how many Christians? So 1.3, something like that. One, you know. So imagine, you know, 7 minus 1.3, how many? That's 4.5.7, oh, right? Billion, around that much are not Christian and there's a new generation coming up, the young people coming up, not only in this country but many countries and people who don't even know what the love of God is all about. And uh, uh, recently uh, some uh, survey have been done about uh, the people that respond to the gospel. So there's, you know, we heard of, how many of you heard of the 1040 window? You, you know, we know that, or did we heard of that. There is now what they call the 414 window. Have you heard of 414? It's a new thing. And uh, so basically, not to uh, give less focus on the other ages, but in the survey they've done, they've found out that people who are ages 4 to 14 are the ones that are most easy to respond to the gospel message. 4 to 14. And then uh, so there's much discussion. In fact, there was a conference not a long time ago, last week uh, in New York, about you know, a thousand pastors came to discuss that, about what the church can do and to focus on that in addition to what we already do. Because this is an entirely new generation coming up and many have not even heard uh, the gospel and much less probably even their parents. So that's something uh, I'm praying about, you know, for the church, for us uh, to focus uh, as we move on. Because once you reach those young people, 4 to 14, guess what? I mean, usually their parents also respond. You try to reach the parents, it's so difficult, they, you know. Uh, but you, when you reach the kids, then the, usually the parents would. So that's something to pray about, think about. A uh, big, big chunk of the, of the population for... 14. And we are glad that uh, New Life, we are doing that with the Altadena uh, Elementary School here. Uh, some, like last time, we had like around 32 kids. And it's kind of difficult because the classroom is uh, cramped. But uh, appreciate those who are teaching, uh, Janet and uh, Marianne and, and Ezra, helping, sharing the Bible you know, to these people. So that's something that uh, we continue to do. Um, also just want to mention that... Uh, uh, our schedule coming up will be very busy, so we will really need everybody's uh, help. You know, I would say, I need your help, we need your help because we have these activities you know, coming up. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, this coming November 23, I was kind of whether I should do it or not, but we decided to do it anyway. We have the open house. This is Thanksgiving, before the Thanksgiving, the weekend. So we have a Thanksgiving celebration. We'd like to invite 
the community and our friends, you know, here. And the theme, remember last time we had a theme called, uh, Who is God? This time the theme is a reason to celebrate. It came from our discussion below downstairs. A reason to celebrate. Because there are so many things going on in the world today. And there are always many reasons why we can complain and be disappointed and so forth. But our message, the gospel, is to show that in spite of whatever situation we are in, there is a reason to celebrate. So we'd like to invite people to come and we'll, be, there, we'll do a, a, a brochure again, a card. And just say we invite you in a new life is throwing a party. And then uh, we invite them to come here for that occasion, uh, November the 23rd. I, I'm sorry, I know it's my birthday. That is not the reason to celebrate. But it just so happened, I feel good about it though. <laughs> but it is about Jesus, right? It's, that's what it's all about. So please pray for that. And also each one of us, please make sure that we invite somebody. Spice, invite somebody, especially those who don't come to church. Invite them, just say, we're having a Thanksgiving celebration, a party. You know, just come here and good food and games afterwards. You know, downstairs probably is more work to do it out there. But it will be less, kind of less work. We'll try to make it, make sure it's less work than, than last time. And also I will only get uh, 500 instead of a few thousands of invitation cards. Yes, Brian. I was going to say, you can actually put your announcement on radio. I, I know it's free uh, on Crawford Broadcasting. They have a, a, a they have a, they'll announce it uh, about your activity there. And uh, it's on 7.40 a.m. Anyway, I can tell you more about it afterwards. But you could actually have this announcement on the radio. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For free. <laughs> so. Get this room filled up and have some miracles multiplying the chicken and spaghetti. <laughs> that could be. That's good. You know, we'll... We'll do our best and we'll, you know, let's pray about it. So that's November the 23rd. And then the Saturday after that is our schedule to feed the homeless. That's the fifth Saturday. So one week after that we have the feeding the homeless. And so we need five, at least five volunteers for that. And then one week after that, December the 7th, we're going to feed 50 people at Walter Hoving Home. And uh, the Speeds Club volunteered to do that. And we're going to feed those and we will conduct a worship service for them. These are women, that, you know, battered women, you know, different background. So we're going there on December 7th. Then a week after that, we're going to have our Christmas party. A week after that. And after, after that, it's going to be Christmas. And then, hey, Rose Parade is coming up. And of course, we need volunteers. Right? It's, uh, we have we, such a small congregation that we handle the formation area. So uh, most of our volunteers, like in my own grandstand, they're mostly, you know, outside of the new life. And I try to invite people outside. So we need volunteers. The money goes to SCP scholarship, uh, Good News Club, and other missions that uh, we are involved. So, you know, we appreciate that. So that's January uh, 1. And there's something happening January 3. Uh, 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 January 3. You, Anthony, do you know what it is? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so January 3, it's a wedding that's coming up um, that time. And then January 17, we're going to have our banquet. First, Speeds Club banquet, January 17. So you can see it's kind of, whoa, you know, have you? So appreciate your prayers and, and, your, and your support for, for all of that. Uh, but of course, before we forget, I'd like to congratulate Robbie Moyargas for passing the board exam. Very good. Happy birthday to uh, Debbie O'Brien. Welcome everyone. And I'm your first, it's not here, October 29. And happy anniversary to Ezra and Marianne. Uh, we have discipleship class today, and we are going to talk about what does the Bible say about time, future, how do we handle that. So it's going to be a very entertaining uh, discussion. Okay, uh, let's go to God in prayer. Any prayer requests that I forgot? Anyone else? Appreciate it. Any? Okay, let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for your presence. 
and for your inspiration. For those who will speak to us and us who will listen, speak to us, Lord God, through your Spirit, directly in our hearts, Lord, so we feel your presence and hear you. You said in John, my, my people hear my voice. Help us to have that sensitivity to your voice, to your spirit. Lord, I pray that because uh, we all come from different situations and background and anyone who's going through some trials and challenges, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you be with them. Give them the answers to their questions and provisions for their needs. Bless them with health, Lord. We need you. Thank you, Lord God, for being here and all this. We ask and pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.